a first is that, you know, uh, it seems that there is some kind of politics. Uh, if something doesn't seem to pay in terms of whether or not it will be able to pay for the research that has gone into it, oftentimes that line is not pursued. No. Uh, how do you view herbal medicine? Because a lot of people will say that it, a lot of people who are going into that research, you know, for local cure leaves and what they have, what herbs have, oftentimes are looked upon with disdain from those uh, practicing orthodox medicine. Yeah, they will, but now that some of us who have, uh, who have uh, the same qualifications, went to the same schools, teach medical doctors, are now embracing it, then what, what, uh, what, what argument will you have? Where I went to the same school with you. I decided not to practice uh, pharmacy. I went to some of, some of them have MD. My colleague, Eric, is an MD. But he practices uh, 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 not herbal medicine, but phytomedicine. It's the, same it's the same pharmacy, the same pharmaceutics. The difference is the origin of the pharmacon. Just the difference. It's just like instead of taking one simple compound, you're having a mixture of compounds. Sometimes you go to the doctor, he tells you, take this headache, take this, and you mix all the together. What is wrong in, in mixing all together? But the, the bigger challenge is that you don't need all that medicine. The Western health is not as, as good as ours. And yet they are making us tow their line when they are the ones who should be towing our own line. M most of the diseases we suffer by simple lifestyle change can change uh, people from suffering from those things. Exercises and so on. There, those, are not those are not alternative medicine. Those are not traditional medicine. It's just a lot of... And secondly, the bigger issue which uh, I, may, I keep mentioning, if Nigeria had been uh, an individual, it was Africa uh, as a whole, they were suffering from a severe case of low self-esteem. They just don't uh, have any confidence in themselves. If this uh, uh, treatment that we are mentioning that happened, that uh, four people got survived, it would have been celebrated if it had been America, where they would have been going around preaching and talking to people how to manage Ebola cases, giving seminars, giving uh, uh, WhatsApp uh, text messages. But ours would be, oh, maybe they didn't even have Ebola in the first place. Maybe uh, it was just uh, one Baba Lawa that treated them. Maybe, I mean, all negativity. But it's, it doesn't do us anywhere. So we are still focused on going to the frontiers of science in terms of looking at ways to make people uh, better. We've been doing this for, uh, as I said, 30-something years, and uh, we have uh, found it a very lucrative area of uh, study in terms of scientific publication. We found it a very lucrative area of study in terms of uh, its uh, business uh, uh, venture. Uh, so there is, uh, frankly, it's uh, just an uh, enclosure of the mind for anybody to look down uh, on such a pursuit. Uh, to their own chagrin, because if if, they, if somebody is 60 or 70 and cannot work, cannot do things other people do, and still look down on uh, alternative uh, sources, of them, he have himself to blame. There are some people who are 40 years, 30 years, they are just almost burn out. So why would you follow somebody who burnt out at 45 and not look at the people whose lifestyle in Asia and others are getting better? Those are the challenges. Those are the areas we are looking at, diabetes and so on. Even the whole idea of sugar, which they're uh, enforcing us to take, knowing that it is a very poisonous uh, commodity. Those are the issues that we are challenging and we are interrogating. It is it, not a very uh, clever thing to do because these agencies, these people are big pocket uh, entrepreneurs, people who make those things that they are forcing them down our throat. And they can even buy you journalists. People can then have a situation where they write an article, you think that they are criticizing uh, yeah, Nigerian scientists for purely uh, noble reasons. No, because they need to bring back, bring down the, the shepherd so that the, lion, the, the, the sheep will just run, run amok. Mm -hmm. So those of us who are in that, they say, yeah, we, on, we are constantly uh, the barrage of that. But luckily it's science. The evidence speaks. Uh, like uh, the famous scientist said, uh, the Tesla, he said that uh, he is not working for now. The future belongs to him, and for the future, he has slaved so much. So that's our 
our consolation. The second thing you yes. said is about, you know, immune boosting. A lot of doctors are beginning to look that way, even orthodox doctors. Yes. And so we're beginning to see, you know, a sprinkling of them here and there, even in Nigeria, yes. who are beginning to approach medicine from that point of view. Yes. What opportunities? You, you see Ebola presenting an opportunity for that line of thinking to, you know, come up. Because we also had a virologist on our program yes. who also said that, you know, the virus will set in slower, much, much, much slower if you have a stronger immune system. Yeah, but it has always been there. And I agree with you, it could be a, a, a very rare opportunity, which nobody prays for, but it came around, mm -hmm. that people will now start reevaluating. We are also, we made that argument in 2000, and those of uh, them who, are, who have access to Scopus, or who can do that, the sign direct, they can put, you will Google it, 2000 Lancet, they will get the article. We argued the whole issue of giving medicine a meaning. And, uh, and uh, you know, doctors are by nature very conservative, which is good for, for our health, that they don't take everything that is said. But over time, I think they'll come around to it, that uh, there is more to healing than just popping pills. And that uh, while a drug may act by a pharmacodynamic mechanism, a drug can, a body can also act by defending itself more. If you've had common code, when I was uh, teaching, I used to have this thing to my students that, if you, are, if you take medicine for cold, it will last seven days. If you don't take medicine, it will last uh, one week. Meaning that uh, those medicines, <laughs> either way, the body will, uh, will, 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 will fight it on its own. So since there are no very uh, known cures for Ebola, no known cure, uh, that is that we have. So what you do is to do management. And one aspect of management is to boost your immune system with a product that has been proved to be by laboratory, not any human studies, to stop the replication of Ebola, but it's also known to be an uh, immune uh, booster. And as I said, wherever I go, even coming to Lagos, when there was no Ebola, I used to carry my beta cola in my pocket before we have these capsules. You, you mean you still eat the bitter cola? Oh, yeah, it's tomorrow. I it's, still it's because of you, it's scarce. <laughs> <laughs> even, even the woman that sells it to us for, for our work, when we now, when she tripled the price, and we ask her, I say, oh, uh, Mother, why can't you say, you think I don't know what in this in the queue? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I'm the one that no, 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 I will tell her that she will make the price. <laughs> even go for that. Oh. So, so I think it's really, a, we simple things, even the veggie coconut oil, which we are promoting through Intercell Health Products, that's our, the company that makes our natural products, Nimet is a pharmaceutical company we work with for the ethical things, things that are normal. What used to be Pfizer is what we use for those. And that's where we made this, uh, this leaflets for how people to wash their hands and, uh, and uh, so on. But the issue, this issue, for example, this is a very important. Veggie coconut oil, as simplistic as it is, the constituent is like lauric acid, which is one of the major components of the uh, mother's breast milk. So we now decided that it's for antenatal women, rather than use paraffin, all those things they give them, let them use uh, veggie coconut oil. To, so that even the, if the baby is going to uh, suck, it will not be taking paraffin at a very early age in the baby's life. Those, as I said, simplistic, but are cutting edge science. So we present the information and ask if you have any alternative to what we have said, then give us rebuttal and will I say but until you will be fish do not talk no prof uh, we have some comments coming in from yes. Nigerians who are watching you yes. and a lot of them but Olatunji Abolori says um, you said a doctor was here that said sanitizer is antibacterial not antiviral yes so he's asking what's your position on that I agree completely but you know those sanitizer most of them are alcoholic and uh, by so doing, they may be just liaising whatever uh, uh, microbe that you have. But what we did in this other one, that not to use a simple sanitizer, we now, our TCP is a phenolic compound. It is a trichlorophenol, but it's the Nimet chlorophenol, NCP is called, is not, it's not a sanitizer. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not a sanitizer, which what they do, they put alcohol to 60%, color it and do it, and that's what we've been buying. But this other one, uh, the, the NCP, is a much better product. Not because we make it, but I'm, I'm telling the uh, people who can Google what, is con what it contains okay. so that they can also look at it. But the sanitizer is effective too. Oh, yeah. If a sanitizer is effective. It cleans your hand, and if you, if you can, uh, purely a physical action there, uh, rubbing it off, it, it cleans up your hands, and then it also can liaise 
uh, whatever microbe you have, but it's not like as if anybody has proved that it is a viricide. I don't think so.